Foreclosures are hitting record highs, unemployment is skyrocketing, and the economy is in shambles. Equally broken futurist, 28-year-old James Brooke, a graduate architect, coffee addict, and self-described average nobody, has returned to his small hometown in West Ohio. Torn between his fanciful dreams and the need to pay off bills, he struggles to find his own identity while facing a harder-than-ever reality. But living under his father's rooftop while keeping his head in the clouds soon turns out to be a bad combination, and the mounting student debt forces him to settle for any job he can find. That's when he stumbles across a new coffee shop, a wayward girl with a talent for storytelling and his own unresolved past. This unexpected set of things could help him figure out what his place in the world is, if that place even exists. Hello everyone, and welcome once again to The Heir's Lair. I am your host, Jonathan Taylor. Today's video, assuming the uh, title and the fact that I just read a synopsis didn't already give it away, is once again going to be a uh, book review. And the book in question this time is Paper Castles, a novel by B. Fox. Not exactly sure what the B stands for, and I probably should have asked the author before uh, filming this review, but oh well, I didn't, so I'll just uh, move on anyway. The TLDW for this review is... This book took me on a bit of a journey, I will uh, admit that. In spite of its arguably quite uh, pedestrian premise, the, uh, the plot takes it into, in some... Um, uh, in some surprising and, in, uh, and intriguing directions. To its credit, um, um, this book's author always knows how to keep his uh, story grounded, or, or, you know, the story grounded, uh, by using familiar uh, conceits and themes. So if you're looking for a uh, deep, heartfelt, and uh, sincere, most of all, um, <laughs> Uh, a narrative based upon an uh, everyday premise, you really cannot go wrong with this book. And now that I've gotten the short version out of the way, it's time I delved into the, uh, you know, into the uh, longer version of the review. The novel is told from the first-person perspective of main character James Brooke, a creative but uh, unlucky architect who uh, struggles to uh, struggle with being productive within a setting that uh, places uh, an arbitrary definition of uh, productivity that doesn't really suit him or his uh, uh, or his strengths. While he is going through his uh, while he's going through his struggles, he uh, becomes acquainted with uh, Karen. Uh, a woman with uh, similar, a woman who faces uh, similar obstacles and also has a similar creative drive to, hit, uh, uh, to him, though in a different field. As the story progresses and their relationship uh, deepens, however, uh, he starts to wonder whether or not the, uh, the way he chooses to address his struggles really is the one that is the most uh, beneficial, like both, both to him and to um, and into his uh, uh, general conditions uh, overall. I won't go into I won't go too deep into how these deliberations work because you know spoilers. I want to avoid them as much as possible. But I will say that the way these deliberations are presented is um, uh, quite interesting. I'm gonna go on a, a little uh, side now to uh, explain some things about my past. I think by now it's pretty well established to uh, anyone who knows me through like social media and stuff that I actually have an uh, uh, engineering degree. But before I decided to study engineering, I I uh, flirted with the idea of perhaps studying architecture. While I uh, while I abandoned those uh, uh, those plans, I still kind I still find the uh, process and the and the general. Uh, implementation or, or uh, concept, concepts behind architecture to still be uh, quite interesting. So seeing these mirrored within uh, this book has been a, a very welcome surprise. And I do mean that they are, and I do mean that they uh, show up uh, maybe not, maybe not uh, frequently, but quite prominently within this book. So, uh, so James isn't just 
um, uh, isn't just a uh, isn't just an offer through uh, lip service. Like there is a, an architect through lip service. Like there is general thought put into how his um, into how his interest in architecture and how his study uh, towards architecture actually helps shape um, uh, shape his decision making and his um, and the ways he uh, views the world. And that is very much reflected in how the in how the narrative presents his um, his inner world. And given this is a uh, story told from the first person perspective, that comes up quite prominently and is done uh, and is done very well. So, so yeah, uh, good job on that front. That being said, the best character uh, of this book and arguably the uh, best counterpoint possible for the narrative this book is trying to present is the uh, previously mentioned Karen. As the, uh, as the two of them uh, bond and their relationship becomes more meaningful, it becomes more obvious that there is a lot more to her than she generally, uh, than she generally showcases. And all of the um, opportunities through which she uh, opens herself up and allows James to, uh, uh, you know, to get a glimpse into her uh, inner world really help, um, you know, really help flesh her out and really help establish uh, uh, exactly who she is and how and what exactly makes her and what makes her, um, you know, at least at, at least as distinctive and at least as uh, interesting a character uh, as he is. And it's throwing rain outside. Anyway, so if you so if you hear it, sorry about that. <laughs> I can't really control the weather. Anyway, back to the back to the story. That uh, uh, that contrast uh, between them actually, I will say, helps fuel uh, the what I will con what I would say is the main uh, theme behind this uh, behind the story, or my main takeaway from it, namely how to best um, uh, how to best find a uh, find a balance between uh, one's inner world and the uh, external necessities of um, of. Uh, of you know pragmatic demands that are that are, that are you know pl placed upon you for a variety of reasons. That is that shines through not just in how uh, that relationship develops, but also when contrasting uh, the relationship between Karen and James to the relationship between James and his father Henry. Henry, uh, at least within this book, is very much portrayed as a uh, stereotypical boomer. Someone for whom uh, creating any kind of uh, productive or uh, doing anything productive for other people is the um, like is the um, best thing one can uh, one can do in life. And any time that you don't spend uh, doing that or um, or uh, keeping yourself alive is time that is just uh, wasted. <clears throat> so yeah. That and that uh, and that contrast is very well done. Not just in exploring how Karen and Henry uh, both deal with their own inner turmoil, but also in how their uh, relationships to uh, James help influence uh, his own uh, uh, his own development within the narrative. Which I couldn't help but find to be one of the most uh, interesting facets that this book really uh, you know really has. Unfortunately, they are somewhat affected by the fact that the uh, narration uh, turns somewhat to the melodramatic uh, at times. That does help establish what kind of character uh, James is. So I'm fine with so I'm fine with it from a, a character perspective, but it does affect the uh, narration and the uh, and the pacing, which does which is a very unfortunate. Uh, consequence, so to speak. Uh, nevertheless, the book does a lot to uh, make up for its slower pace with how with the uh, other characters uh, within the story. They are not as well fleshed out as these um, uh, as the three I mentioned so far, but they are uh, distinctive and memorable enough to where you um, where you can instantly recognize what it uh, you know who these who these people are and what it is that makes them. Uh, um, maybe maybe uh, intriguing in their own way, or or 
uh, this or in general like distinctive. There might there might even be something. <laughs> they might even become someone's favorite. Who knows? Uh, as for the way the uh, setting is presented, well, let's just say it is presented with all of the investment and attention that the uh, creative architect MC is willing to uh, invest within it. That does mean that some locations within the setting are given preferential treatment. However, I think that the uh, that the way the um, and the way the world is showcased overall works for or in general works towards this uh, uh, this book's favor. Overall, in spite of my own issues with uh, with this book's uh, development and pacing, I think it is. I still think it is a uh, very well written and very engaging presentation of uh, what it is that it is uh, trying to achieve. And I'm pretty sure that uh, more eager and more attentive readers will absolutely have their uh, heartstrings torn apart. My final rating for Paper Castles is a 4 out of 5. And that was my review, thank you for your attention. If you enjoyed it, well then please leave a like, maybe even share this video wherever you think other people will like it as well. If you have anything you'd like to add, either to the uh, review or to the book itself, that's what the comment section is for. And if you want to see when my next video gets released, well then uh, please subscribe. And ideally also ring the bell or do whatever else YouTube will ask of you in order to uh, keep you notified. My own novel, Heir to the Empire of the Next Generation, is available at most major book retailers under the master link in the description down below, right past my social media links, which I would suggest you check out should you choose to. Uh, my debut also has a uh, sequel coming out uh, coming out soon, as of the as of the time of this video's production and uh, release. So now might be as good a time as any to uh, get the debut and then either pre-order or outright uh, by the sequel, depending on when it is that you uh, actually see this video. Alternatively, you can choose to support me on uh, Patreon, where you will also get um, uh, various perks, such as early access to videos and scripts for both this channel and my, uh, and my second one, should you choose to. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Taylor, and this has been The Heir's Lair.